How's everyone doing? All right, nice. Uh, so we are Spread the Red, the Alive Youth Worship Band, and we're going to be leading you sh worship today instead of the adult band. So I would, everyone, stand up and worship with us. Rejoice and be glad in it. I won't worry about 
going to sing is um, about just how much alive we are in Christ and that when we're with him we're just full of the spirit and we're just so alive and even when we're like we're in like a rut he's still there with us and he will still pick us up off the ground there was a time I was dead inside you call my name and I try to hide my heart was dark and so full of shame, full of shame. Like the dawning of a brand new day, your love has chased my shame away. How amazing now I hear you singing over me. Lovely I sing, lovely I live, I'm giving you all I have to give. Until the world knows the love that's Every moment that I spend with you, I am overwhelmed by your grace. I can't keep to myself. Lovely I sing, lovely I live. I'm giving you all I have to give until the world knows the love that's made me so alive. Lovely I sing, lovely I live. I'm giving you all. Until the world knows the love that's made me so 
I just want to ask you if you can just um, raise your heart up to God and just take this song and just use it as a prayer and just pray with God right now. that will touch all of our hearts. We just pray that you come into this place of worship. Amen. Lord, I give 
give you my heart, give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. Don't want to stand here and shout your praise And walk away and forget your name I'll stand for you if it's all I do Cause there is none that compare to you Cause all I want in this lifetime is you And all I want in this whole world is you, you, you Tell the world that you Tell the world that, tell the world that, tell the world that he died for them. Tell the world that he lives again. Tell the world that Jesus lives. Tell the world that, tell the world that, tell the world that he died for them. Tell the world that he lives again. No longer I, but Christ in me. Cause it's the truth that sets me free. How could this world be a better place? By thy mercy, by thy grace. Cause all I want in this lifetime is you. And all I want in this whole world is you, you, you. Tell the world that Jesus lives. Tell the world that, tell the world that, tell the world that. Tell the world that he lives again. Tell the world that Jesus lives. Tell the world that. Tell the world that. Tell the world that he died for them. Tell the world that he lives again. Come on, come on, we'll tell the world about you. Come on, come on, we'll tell the world about you. Come on, come on, we'll tell the world about you. Come on, come on, we'll tell the world about you, you, you. Tell the world that Jesus lives. Tell the world that, tell the world that. Tell the world that he died for them. Tell the world that he lives again. Tell the world that Jesus lives. Tell the world that. Tell the world that. Tell the world that he died for them. Tell the world that he lives again. Come on, come on, we'll tell the world about you. Come on, come on, we'll tell the world about you. Come on, come on, we'll tell the world about you. Come on, come on, we'll tell the world about you, you, you. Tell the world that Jesus lives. Tell the world that, tell the world that. Tell the world that he died for them. Tell the world that he lives again. Tell the world that Jesus 
Jesus King. Say, 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 say you believe it. Sing loud, sing like you mean it. We know and we declare it. Jesus is King. Say, say. on what will last your words your love your faithfulness our hope is built on nothing less we open wide our mouths to praise let this generation raise a song of freedom all our days say 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 you believe it Sing for the whole world to hear it. We know and we declare it. Jesus is King. Say, 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 say you believe it. Sing loud, sing like you mean it. We know and we declare it. Jesus is King. Say, say. The King of Love, King of Love, I believe, I believe your kingdom come, the kingdom come, Son of God, Son of God, the King of Love, the King of Love. Say, say, say you believe it, sing for the whole world to hear it. We know and we declare it, Jesus is King. Say, 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 say you believe it. Say love, say life, you mean it. We know and we declare it. Jesus is king. Say, say. Say, say. Say, say. Say, say. Say, say. Whoa, be seated. Hey, wait a minute. Worship team, before you go away, of all the things that you guys could possibly do this morning, like sleeping in, you guys are here worshiping, leading us in worship. So on behalf of us, we want to say thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for doing that. Good morning. Welcome to Alive. If you're here for the very first time, Stop by our information center on your way out, and we have a little gift for you. It's a little book written by Andy Stanley just for saying thank you for being here this morning. We're so glad that you're here. When you came in, you were given a talking notes, and in your talking notes fold out, you have a connection card. We need everybody to tear it out, fill it out, and drop it in the offering plate at the end of the service. That's the way you stay in touch with us. That's the way we communicate with you. In fact, you can get us uh, messages and you can sign up for things. And one thing I want to talk to you about is baptisms. On your connection card, you can sign up. If you have never been baptized, you can sign up to be baptized. Next Saturday evening, we're going to do baptism service. And after the 11 o'clock service next Sunday, we're going to do baptism. So if you've never taken that next step, Please sign up for that, and one of the pastors, he'll get in touch with you and talk you through that process. One last thing I want to let you know. I've got my dates here. I don't want to mess this up. It's very important. Foundations is the class. It's a three-week session that comes right after Discover Alive. starts on March 28th at 6.30 here. Jeff teaches that. If you haven't been through our Foundations class, and I know most of you haven't because we're just starting that, Come to that, sign up for that. If you need child care, you need to let us know on your communication card. All right? Now, we have another campus across the freeway, and we also have an Internet campus. They're going to be joining us live right now. Would you join me in welcoming them? 
Welcome, guys. We're glad you're with us. And now you all can turn your attention to the screens. Way I'm giving up this time. Yeah, you know I'm right here. I'm not losing you this time. And I'm all in. Nothing left to hide. I'm falling harder than our last night I spent a week. Well, good morning. How's everyone? I want to welcome you guys. I had just a moment ago, I got to welcome the online campus. I'm so glad you guys are joining us as well as Twin Peaks. Um, I'm so glad you're a part of Alive. We are wrapping up a series today called All In. And next week, we're going to start, I think, is what our best series ever. I'm telling you, I know you hear me say those kind of things, but this is going to be a great series. You won't want to miss it. Toxic. We're going to talk about the dangers in our lives ahead of time. You know, with this week, I know a lot of you have been praying for the folks in Japan, the tsunami. What a sad thing. Uh, and some of the, all that's going there, you know, we want to avoid the tsunamis in our own personal life because there are a lot of telltale signs. And so we're going to spend a few weeks talking about that. I hope you guys will be a part of that. Invite your friends. Toxic. Everybody say toxic. I don't want those things in my life. Do you? So we start out this series talking about bold prayers, prayers like the early church, praying that God would give us his power and that he would give us the boldness to speak his word. Then we went to the week, remember when the couch was up here? And we kind of talked about uh, how we tend to get used to things. The old couch. How many of you are selling your couch right now? Because we went, oh, I have to show you this, by the way. Uh, I came in my office a couple days later, and there was a letter on this bag from a guy that goes to our church. Basically, he says, enclosed is what I thought was a beautiful shirt, but now that I've attended your service where you talked about the old couch, I realize it's no longer nice. Here it is. Enjoy. And he put on here, he washed it for me. He knows me well enough to know. He says, please, in the future, let me know when you're going to be using old furniture again, because I'm 69 years old, and I'm sure I have a shirt to match anything you have. And I don't, can you guys see? Oh, where's the... The couch isn't up here. Well, you guys who had the couch, do you remember how close this looks? Can you zoom in for a minute, guys, on this? This looks like the couch, and he was wearing it that day. (laughs) So he wants me to give him, he just asked me if I'd give him a heads up from now when I'm using old furniture because he has shirts to match. I'm so sorry. And if you guys see me wearing this, yeah, take that off me. So we were talking about, and, and that, we, if you'll remember, we talked about how we have new and improved children's ministry. That's why, you know, we're always looking ahead. And just even now with our youth ministry, we are really changing youth ministry. And now Wednesday night is their deal. And on the weekends, we're asking them to be a part of the service team. And they're already doing some teaching to our younger kids. I'm excited about that. Uh, on this campus, I know you guys got to hear the youth band. Wasn't that great? Yeah. I love it. And I know it's, that was like halfway. Come on, guys. Didn't you enjoy it? Yeah. And then I, for some of you, you're going, oh, it's a little loud for me. It's okay. It's why we provide earplugs. We do have them. You're welcome to get them every time you come in. Uh, but it was so great, you, you guys. Thank you, youth band, for playing. Uh, it was so funny. Today, one of the youth, as they were practicing, I was messing around back here. They didn't know I was back there. And one of them said, Something about, uh, you know, well, we got to be careful. There's a lot of older people in our church. <laughs> and I, I happen to know, this kid grew up in our church. I said, Chad, later on, I said, Chad, you're not even old enough to know what old is. <laughs> he thinks I'm old, you know. It's like, hey, you want to get there? So last week, we uh, talked about how God always has a next step for us. He, he wants us to always grow spiritually. It, 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 he doesn't want us to be stale. He doesn't want us to just kind of level off. There's always more. Today, I want to wrap up this series by kind of talking about, as a follower of Christ, either we are all in or we're not in at all. And I know even as I say, I go, oh, I don't like this either or stuff. It's not me saying it. I want you to see how Jesus says this. I, I don't know, but have you ever been at a place in your life where you committed to something, but you really weren't all in? And because of that, you were miserable and you had a bad, a bad outcome. Man, I have. Uh, Early on, before I met my wife, Kathy, I was actually engaged to a girl. I know, I was horrible. I I don't want my girls dating guys like I was. I refuse to let them. So, guys, if you want to date my daughters, (laughs) 
you're in for trouble. And I do have a nine millimeter. Just saying. Um, I, um, but I was engaged with this girl, and, and she came to visit one time. I was on staff church in Colorado Springs. She was in Kansas City. She came to visit for the weekend, and the pastor had me doing announcements. So I did announcements. You know, it's what we pastors do. We never do announcements. And so I did the announcements, and I'm getting ready to walk off the stage. And, and the pastor, his name was Denny Owens. I love the way Denny talked. He stopped me. He goes, wait a minute, Jeff. Don't you have an announcement to make? I'm like, oh, no. And he said, everybody, and this was my home church. I'd gone back after college. He says, everybody, Jeff's engaged. And I felt inside. I'm going, oh, why did he tell everybody? And wouldn't you want to be that girl, ladies? <laughs> and I didn't want anybody to know. And, and I realized at that moment, I realized that he had her stand up. And I go, oh, gosh, I realized at that moment, I'm not all in. This isn't going to work out, is it? I am so glad, and three days before I met my wife, I broke off that relationship. I'm so glad. Um, last night, I got a text and said, what if that girl's listening? I'm like, I'm still, I'm so glad I met Kathy. But I realized at that moment, I was not all in. I committed to it, but I wasn't all in. And for the next few days, I was miserable because everybody knew what I was committed to, and I knew it wasn't the right thing, and I wasn't all in. You know, some of the most miserable people I know are people who want to be Christians, say they are a follower of Christ, but really they just don't go all in. And then they're miserable. You know, I don't, I, I, I'm a follower of Christ, but I don't want to get baptized. Why not? Well, I don't want everybody to know. And you're just miserable. Don't want to take that next step. Now, Jesus said it this way, Matthew 12, 30. I want you to read it with me out loud, all of you on all our campuses, everybody engaging, let's say it together. Anyone who isn't with me opposes me. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Now, these are the words of Jesus. He's talking to us as his followers. He says, you're either in or you're out. For us, this means we're either following his teaching and his ways, and we're living by it, or we're not. We're always growing, taking the next step, or we're not. I, I give, I've given you guys uh, some time to give me some feedback. My question is this, what one decision do you need to make to be all in for Jesus? Take out your phones, Twitter me, Facebook me, text me. What one decision, you know it. If I'd make that decision, I would be all in. Now I want you to write this down in your notes. This is the one thing I want us to get today. And it's not me saying, these are the words of Jesus in our language. If you're not all in, you're not in at all. Everybody say it with me. If you're not all in, you're not in at all. Jesus said, you're either for me or you're against me. And some of you are going, well, wait a minute, I like the neutral zone. You know, like, like the no-fly zone they're talking about this week. I would like to be in the neutral zone. Jesus says there is no neutral zone when it comes to your spiritual life. You're either all in or you're all out. A couple of years ago, we're coming up on Easter, about two years ago, we did a series based on a country song by Tim McGraw uh, called Live Like You Were Dying. Some of you were here for that. We did, all of our pastors did everything in the, the song. You know, we went skydiving, Rocky Mountain climbing, and then we went bull riding. And I'll never forget, when we went out to go bull riding, there were a bunch of people who wanted to go from the church. I invited everybody, pay 20 bucks, you can come. The guy said, you can go. So we all went. And it was all fun. I mean, everybody's trying on the stuff. We're holding the ropes, you know, putting on, you know, everything and listening to the cowboys. And everybody's had a blast. And everybody's, uh, you know, we're going to do this. But then came the moment <laughs> when we had to cross over the chute and get on the bull. I'll never forget when they strapped on. I said, I can't believe how tight that is. And they go, are you, if you're not all, they actually said, if you're not all in, man, you'd better not do this. And I said, no, I am. I said, I've been wanting to do this my whole life. I said, open the gate. And I knew, I said, oh, this is going to hurt. Boy, did it hurt. <laughs> man, if you were here, I spoke with broken ribs for a few weeks. It was like, oh, man, it had been good. We want to get good sermon material, all that stuff. You know, you're going to break a few ribs. But what I found out was some of the people that went through all the fun and had, it was great, they were committed to doing it. But then when it came time to get on the bull, they didn't do it. They found out they weren't really all in. And I'm not gonna mention any pastors, but one of them is sitting on the front row. I would never call out one of our pastors, Jason, but <laughs> after he saw two of us break ribs and get knocked out, he said, I'm not doing it. You know, there, there's, there's, there's a point in life where we think this is all fun and I'm committed, but then it's like all of a sudden there's a price to be paid. 
That's when we find out, are we really all in? And when it comes to following Jesus, there's a price to be paid. And there comes a point when we realize, are we either all in or we're not in at all? If you have your Bibles, Luke chapter 9, I want to look at a story. Jesus uh, is walking along, and there are three people in this story. And you may see yourself as one of them. But Jesus is walking along, and there's three people who, they want to be his followers. And it's real important as we go through this that we see that, that the one thing they all had in common was they wanted to follow Jesus. All three of these guys wanted to follow Jesus. And then Jesus ends by talking about a passage in 1 Kings 19, a story that happened with Elisha. And we'll we'll end by looking at that as well. Uh, Luke chapter 9, I want to begin with verse 57. As they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I'll follow you wherever you go. Now look, this person came to Jesus. I'll follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, foxes have dens to live in, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Then Jesus finds another person. He's walking there. He says to another person, come, follow me. The man agreed, but he said, Lord, first, let me return home and bury my father. Now, that sounds like a very reasonable request to us. At first read, we're going, well, it sounds like the guy's dad's dead. Let him go home and bury him. Jesus said, let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach the kingdom of God. We're going to look at what Jesus says here because at first glance, we're going, oh, he's kind of mean. Verse 61, another said, Lord, I'll follow you, but first let me say goodbye to my family. Seems reasonable, wouldn't you agree? Jesus said, anybody who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Now, when I read that, I'm going, what? Lord, this guy wants to follow you, and your response is about a plow, and you're not fit looking back. What does that mean? Well, Jesus gives us a couple things here, some insights that we need to really see for our own lives if we're going to follow him, if we're going to be all in, because we are either all in or we're not in at all. First thing, I want you to write this down. We need to count the costs. The first guy came to Jesus, and, and he says, I want to follow you. And this whole story has to do with, as he's talking to Jesus, talking to this man, it has to do with security. Where do we get our security? Are we really putting it in Christ or somewhere else? And especially for this man, as he followed Jesus in his ministry, because literally Jesus was traveling around and he said, if you're going to follow me and be part of this ministry, you won't even have a place to lay your head. Luke 9, 57, I have it in your notes. I just want to kind of have you look at it here. Someone says to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied. Everybody say, Jesus replied. And then he deals with the security issue. And all of us, we get this. We understand this because we all have honestly put our hope in something. And sometimes, even as we put our hope in Christ, we find ourselves leaning on something in this world. And Jesus says, no, that's not it. It's either all me or nothing. Now, everybody in this room would agree that you don't have success without sacrifice. I mean, if we were to interview any professional athlete, if we could get them on stage and ask them, how'd you get here? They would talk about their sacrifice. If you're a great musician, I hear people all the time say, I wish I could play like that. And I'll say, well, do you practice four hours a day like they did? No, I just want to play like that. Well, it doesn't work that way. I'll I'll run into couples say, I wish we had a marriage like that. Well, are you willing to do what they did? Are you willing to sacrifice and serve one another like they do? Well, no, we just want a great marriage. We want to raise great kids. Any parent who's raised great kids will tell you it's a sacrifice. Even if you raise some bad kids, it's a sacrifice. Right, parents? (laughs) That may be more of a sacrifice. There's a price to be paid. And when it comes to following Jesus... There's a price to be paid. And Jesus tells us, consider the cost. Jeff, you sound like you're trying to talk us out of being a follower of Christ. Yeah, if I can sell you off of it, get off of it. Because if you're only half in, you are going to be miserable. Because you want to know what this will cost you to follow Jesus? It'll cost you your life, everything. But the journey's worth it. For me, it's like, this is it. This is life. He has purpose and he has a plan. But all of your, our selfish and worldly desires, it costs that. And Jesus tells us that very clearly here. Count the cost because you're either all in. If you're not all in, you're not in at all. Second thing, don't wait for a better time. Anybody ever done that? Man, I have. Uh, following Jesus requires instant action. Delayed obedience, 
is disobedience. Now this guy, the second guy, Jesus approached him and he was interested in following him. But Jesus has this sense that this guy is reluctant and he challenges that sense of reluctance and we, in his, his lack of commitment because our commitment to Christ has to be complete. It has to be without reservation. It has to be complete resolve. This is an issue of priorities that Jesus deals with here. Look at this verse, Luke 9, 59. He said to another person, come follow me. Then the, the man agreed. Everybody say agreed. agreed. Now I want you to read those next few words with me. He said this, two words, Lord first. Everybody say that, Lord. Lord. Now you can fill in the blank. He said, first, let me go home, return to bury the, my dead, uh, my father. Now what, what we don't understand here is culturally, um, he's saying here, his dad's not dead. We don't see that scripture. He's saying, Lord, let me go home and fulfill my family duty. Let me live at home until dad dies. And once he dies and I've buried him, then I'll come follow you. You see, for some of us, we'd say, I, 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 uh, I think there's a better time, Lord, where I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna be all with you, when my kids are grown. Or maybe you're a young couple and you say, when we have kids, then we're gonna really be all in. Or how about this, as a young person, when I'm through college, because right now I just want to have a little fun, sow all my wild oats. Then will be a better time. Maybe once we're married or whatever it would be that you'd say, there's a better time coming. Then I'll be all in. When I'm financially secure, then I'll be all in. And we're always talking about the next step being later on. This guy, he's asking for an infinite delay to follow Jesus. And some of us do that as well. Even as we've gone through all the series and all in, we talked about the next step and there's still this infinite delay of taking the next step. Don't wait for a better time. There is no better time. Jesus said, if, you, you, if you're not all in, you're not in at all. You're either for me or against me. Number three, there can only be one first. Everybody say one first. One first. Now again, here we have to look back at the context of What's going on in, in that society, in the Near Eastern culture? They had a lot of traditional family values that we have no idea. We, we don't understand at all. We wouldn't find it in America at all. And Jesus here is responding to uh, the qualifying use of the word now that this guy uses the word, how he uses the word first. The last guy used it as well. Luke chapter 9, verse 61, 62. Another one said to him, Lord. And by the way, this guy, see, he's walking along with them. He overhears the conversation, and now he just responds, says, yeah, I'm a, I want to follow you. And what's he say? But, what's he say? But first. Now, he makes a very reasonable request in our mind. He says, but first let me say goodbye to my family. Now, again, we, looking back at the original text, we can really see it's much different than just saying, hey, family, I will see you later. This is a more of an approval thing. He's going back and he says, I want to make sure my family approves of me following you. I'll get baptized when the whole family can be baptized. I'll follow Jesus as long as it's okay with my wife or my husband. Jesus says, no, this is a loyalty issue. When it comes to relationship, I'm above every other relationship. I wanna tell you something. Folks, the best way I can love my wife is to put Jesus first. The best way Kathy can love me is to put Jesus first. The best way I can be a good father is that Jesus is first. Kathy and I, when we got married, we, we were clear about that with one another. You will never be number one. You'll always be number two. And so far, that's really worked well for us because that always brings us back to our knees when it comes to the times when we have relationship problems. When we're dealing with our kids, it always brings us back to Christ and his power. And this is an issue of putting Christ above all other human relationships and all other human loyalties. This guy wants to make sure his family approves. And Jesus responds. It's kind of a weird response. When we see it, we're going, Lord, what does that mean? He responds by saying, anybody who puts their hand to the plow is not fit for the kingdom of God. What does that mean, Lord? Well, he's telling us and pointing to a story in 1 Kings chapter 19. It's the story of Elisha. There's Elijah the prophet and Elisha. And it points to his life. In fact, he asked that very same question. The question of actually saying goodbye to your family, that's not unreasonable. In fact, Elisha asked that. I want you to go ahead and fill in the blank and then let's look at that story in 1 Kings chapter 19. The blank is simply this. 
eliminate temptation to return. You guys, you've all known people like this, or maybe you're like this, where you want to follow Jesus, but I want to hang on to that little part of my life, my old life. Have you ever done something where somebody said, well, you need a backup plan? And here's what I, I learned this in college. I remember my professor saying, if you have a backup plan, something to fall back on, you will. You'll fall back on it. I kind of like living life without a net. I don't know. Um, I kind of like living life where Jesus, if you say do this, we are all in. And people all the time as a church, they'll say, well, what if that doesn't work? We're like, this is God's plan. We're going all in. If it doesn't work, he drops us. You know, he's never dropped us. He promised he won't. All in. So Elisha, he's out in the field plowing. In the Bible, there's a great part of the story there we don't have time to look at. There's 12 groups of people plowing and that all, it's so significant, but he's out in the, the field plowing. And for us, it doesn't carry as much weight because we're not farmers. We don't live in that society, but they were mostly farmers or fishermen. So this is his livelihood. He's out there farming and Elijah, the prophet comes and sees him and walks out to him and puts his cloak, his coat his, on his shoulders and basically says, you're the one that God wants to be my assistant. I want you to come follow me. Chapter 19, 1 Kings. And here's what Elisha does. I, I have the, the, the verses in your notes from 1 Kings 19, verse 21. Elisha returned his oxen and he slaughtered them. And he asked, by the way, he says, can I go and say goodbye to my family? Elijah says, yeah, you can go do that. But he's not saying, I want to go get my family's approval. He's saying, I want to go say goodbye because I'm going to leave with you. And here's what he does. He returns to his oxen, he slaughtered them. He used the wood from the plow to build a fire. Everybody read it with me. To, those are just good manly words, aren't they? To what? To roast them. Oh, guys, I dig that. And then I want you to see what this guy, I love this guy. I mean, God, God's calling him and he said, I'm all in. So he said, I'm killing the ox. I'm tearing up the plow. And, and he creates this fire with his plow. And he, he, he roasts the flesh of the ox, and then he has a party and celebrates his new life. He passed around the meat to the townspeople, and they all ate. Then he went with Elijah as his assistant. He slaughters the ox, tears up his plow, builds a fire with the plow, and says, hey, everybody, come on. I want you to celebrate. We're having a party from my old life because I got a new life, and there is nothing left of my old life. I like that all-in mentality. That's what Jesus is saying. You're either for me or against me. And sometimes we want a foot in both worlds, don't we? I'm going to follow Jesus, but just in case I don't really like this following Jesus thing, I'm going to kind of keep this part of my world. Jesus says, we're not even fit for the kingdom when we're like that. He says, man, you're either all in or you're not in at all. You're either for me or against me. There's no, no fly neutral zone. We'd like that. We'd like to be able to say, well, I just want to stay neutral. And especially in our culture, American culture, we like that, well, that's not as offensive to just say, you know, you can kind of be neutral. And Jesus said, there's nothing neutral about me. You're either for me or you're against me. Um, I, I had some, some people respond, uh, especially uh, about this, uh, the, what, what's the one decision? Somebody said, read the Bible. It's a good start, huh? Uh, somebody else quoted Jesus saying, if you're lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Um, Jesus says that, and in fact, the word there is emeo, the Greek word. He says, I will spit you out with disgust. There's no lukewarm. And, uh, you know, sometimes we're sitting there, and we, we'd like to be lukewarm. Jesus says, no, you're either for me or against me. You're either hot or cold. He says, I wish you were one or the other. You know, I, I know right now, even as I say this, some of you are going, Jeff, you're being a little harsh. It's not me. I want, you know, if it were up to me, I'd give you all a break. I would say, hey, just try this thing out for a little while. You know what I mean? Do both things for a while and see if it works out. I mean, that's the way I would like to do it. I'm just telling you what Jesus said. You know what I mean? And, and this is what he says to me. And even as I've been going through the series, there's places where God has shown me, Jeff, this is a part of your life now. You're growing, you're maturing. Get all in. Quit holding on to that. All in. you either all in or you're not in at all when it comes to following 
Jesus. Is my clock right? Is it 1022? Is that right? Man, I got time. I usually don't have enough time. I should have added like two more points because I'm about ready to wrap up. You guys want me to just do more? No, some of you are like, yeah, no, please. You owe us about three hours from the last year. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. As we've been going through this series, I've been talking to you all along about what's your next step. I'm telling you, God has a next step for you. He always wants us to grow. You know, this, uh, as we're going through this series, I woke up one morning, I had some decisions to make uh, that were really tough. And I woke up one morning and the day I thought, oh, I don't want to go through this day. You ever have those days? Um, some of those, I, I think I put on my Facebook, mama said there'll be days like this. Um, and somebody asked me le- later on, they said, well, what's wrong? I said, why does it have to be wrong? They said, well, don't you know the song? I said, really, I don't. I just know that one line. But I said, it is a tough day. Uh, but I woke up one morning and uh, I said, Lord, I really, I know what we have to do, but I don't want to, I don't want to do it. And I woke up early that day and the Lord just gave me a picture. He said, Jeff, this is like you're going down the Colorado River in the Grand Canyon when you do those overnight trips and you typically stop before the major white water rafting and you camp. The next morning, you have a choice. He says, this is where you're at. You've, you've been on the river. Now you have a choice. You can either put in and do the white waters today, or you can try to hike out of the canyon and haul everything out. He says, here's one thing I promise you, though. I just had a sense that he was saying this to me. He says, I promise you the ride will be fun. And I got to tell you, I don't know how God speaks to you, but for me, I'm like, let's go, man. I said, I'm putting in, Lord. I've kind of regretted that moment. You know, I usually get halfway through the whitewater and then I'm like, oh, what am I doing here? I'm so stupid. It was like the bull ride, you know, it's great until I started hitting. And I'm like, what the dumb, man? You know, I'm hitting the ground. And, but then afterwards, the ride was great. And that's where I'm at, man. I put in. I put in the water. So here's what I'm saying to you. Put in. If Jesus says count the cost. The white waters are coming. But here's what you need to know. They're coming with or without him. That's life. But when we have him, he gives us the strength to get through it. He's with us through it. Take the next step. One of the next steps that I've kind of challenged you to is uh, if you take out your next steps paper, I want to ask you all to look at it. And this time I want to ask you to look at the back. I haven't talked a whole lot about this. I did the first week a little bit. But just committing as a church together. Uh, You know what? You are already, if you're a follower of Christ, you are a member of God's family. You are a member. You're in. It's not like there's this uh, special membership and you don't get in. No, you're in if you're a follower of Christ. But the Bible says that we need to commit to and be a part of the church family. In fact, we see spiritually that we're, we're like spiritual orphans if we're not a part of a church family. Now, can you love God without being a part of a church family? Yeah, but we need each other. God designed it that way. And I want to encourage you to fill this out. One of the things we do is we kind of just start over every year or two and we just say, hey, we're going to wipe the slate clean. If you want to be on the team here, just fill this out, drop it in the plate. If you'd like more questions, we'd love to talk with you about them. But I want to ask you to prayerfully take that step. Let's be a part of the team and let's partner together in membership and as a church family. Now, if you're here, you're listening to my voice, you say, well, I don't like this church. I don't know. And I know it couldn't be me, right? It's not that you don't like me. Well, that hurt. (laughs) Honey, do you like me? Yeah, thanks, babe. Um, listen, really, if you, don't, if you don't like a live, I totally get that. We're not for everybody. Um, but what I do know, there are some great churches here in town. Uh, we would love our pastors. We know a lot of the pastors. We would love to help you connect. Because if you don't connect here, you need to connect somewhere in some church. Be a part of a church family where you can serve, where you can walk in accountability, and where you can grow we need that so that we can take the next steps in our lives. And boy, just, you can just write down your connection card. Say, I need another church. Please call me. We will help you. One of our staff this week just helped somebody do that. We love doing that. Uh, we have pastors that send people to us all the time. We want you to plug in somewhere. We want you to grow spiritually. What's your next step? You know, I, I was thinking this week with the, the disaster in Japan. I, you guys, I'm sure you all saw those pictures of the tsunami coming in. And uh, we, we turned on the news one, one uh, morning really early and just kind of catching up the news. Kathy and I just laid in bed and kind of caught up on the news and I saw those pictures. And in my mind, I thought, I want my life to be consumed like that with Christ. I want it to just be like a tsunami coming in in a positive way that I am just consumed by him. You know, while we're praying for that disaster, I'm telling you, that's what this means. It's to be all in. It's like, God, it's all 
yours. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, as we come to the end of the service, I pray you'd speak to our hearts. Whatever our next step is, we want to be all in. Every time you call us to the next step, that we would take it. Because we are either all in or we're not in at all. You said, Jesus Christ, we're either for you or we're against you. Lord, and the, the beauty of that is when we are all in with you, you give us life. You forgive the guilt of our past. You give us power to get through today and you give us a promise of a future with you. If you've never received that as we're praying, you can receive that right now. You can begin that relationship with Christ. Just say, Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I wanna follow you. I want to follow you. I wanna be all in. Would you help me to begin that relationship with you? Now, as a follower of Christ, those of you who are followers of Christ, maybe there's, you know your next step, whatever it would be. You know that one decision. Just commit to God right now. Say, Lord, I'm gonna do it. I'm putting in, I'm getting in the water. I know there may be hard times ahead. Be with me, help me. Give me wisdom to navigate it. But I'm all in. Here it is. Lord, as a church, we want to tell you we are all in. When it comes to living out this vision of leading people who are far from you to be your followers, making disciples, we are all in. Would you help us to navigate the waters, the rough waters that come? We're trusting you. We're following you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, on both our campuses, as we close, please take out your connection card. Let me know the decisions you've made so that I can pray for you, what your next step is. I spend the time during the week praying for you and just uh, praying God will help you and strengthen you and give you the power to live that out. I want to ask on both our campuses, ushers, if you would, to come forward. We're going to give back to the Lord in tithes and offerings. I'm telling you, we're starting a new series next week. I want to show you a video about that. I am so excited about it. Toxic. God wants to get rid of that junk in our life so that we don't have the crisis coming. We can avoid some of that. Watch this. out there trying to fix the world's problems by thinking happy thoughts. It's like I was telling my ex- about how to recognize and remove the hidden dangers in our lives. I will see you next weekend. Invite a friend for Toxic. God bless you. Have a great week.